And here we are, it's a patch of dirt. Let me show you how to use the sonar, which is right up on the top screen. Look at the sonar readout on the upper screen. The yellow arrow in the middle shows your location. Press the L button or R button to activate the sonar and display dots where something is buried. It could be a fossil rock or just a regular rock. Okay. I have buried three rocks and I want you to find them and dig them up. Right here, it's a Spinax head. That's exactly how you do it. That looks like a fossil you've already revived. But you can clean the same fossil again for more points. With a better quality fossil, you can integrate more genetic data into your Vivisaur to make it stronger. Okay. My case can hold five or... Eight fossil rocks. Not regular rocks. <laughs> okay. Third one is right here. Dun da da da! It's a brand new fossil. That's a fossil you have yet to revive. Uh, we're ready now. I don't need any more practice. Okay, I guess I have to revive a new Vivisaur. That'll be fun, won't it? I might as well uh, excavate those V-Raptor legs while I'm at it. So I won't be but a mo- what's this? Let me introduce you to KL33N. If you invert the threes in his name, you get clean, which I thought is really clever. Pleased to meet you. I'm KL33N at your service. KL33N is here to help you manage your fossil rocks and clean fossils. Talk to him whenever you bring in new fossil rocks for cleaning. He'll help you get everything cleaned and revived the way they should be. I am unrivaled when it comes to revival, ready to serve. He's also programmed to observe your cleaning and learn over time. When he's watched you long enough, you may well be able to let him handle all your cleaning for you. I will do my best, and I will certainly learn faster by watching the master. He's a poet and he doesn't even know it. You've got to give him credit for his eagerness, eh? I'm sure you guys will get along great. Great, my best friend is a droid. Oh well, he's nice enough. All right, let's clean a few fossil rocks. I will see you uh, shortly. There we go, another 99 point fossil. And it's a head, so we get to revive a new Vivisaur. And appears this Vivisaur is named Shan Shan, which I believe stands for Shan Shanosaurus. Not quite familiar with the species, to be perfectly honest. And it's a bright pink Tyrannosaur of some kind. I'm not going to be using a Shan Shan on my main team. Uh, it's kind of a weak Vivisaur. Shan Shan lands a lot of critical hits, but a low LP ranking makes it vulnerable in the AZ position. And it has support effects all around. Uh, we'll leave the V-Raptor legs for later when we actually get a V-Raptor. Oh, what do you have to say for yourself? Please look at the top screen. Rocks with a new icon hold fossils of a type you have not successfully cleaned. Those of the point value contain fossils you have previously revived. The number is the highest point value you have achieved so far in a cleaning. 
Those numbers can help you decide which fossil to keep and which to leave for others. Alright. Oh, what's this, Dr. Diggins? Whoa! That device just popped out of nowhere. Ah, Volantes! This Vivisaur Management Machine, or VMM, holds your Vivisaurs as medals for storage and organization. So, like Pokemon and the PC, you got Vivisaurs and your VMM. Alright, this is how you use a VMM. What you'll see, first of all, is the team slot screen. Team information will be displayed on the top screen. The slot with the star mark is the team you're currently carrying. The other two slots are reserved for other teams you want to make. I'll show you how to select Vivisaurus to add to your team. This is the team formation screen. The touch screen is where you make all your selections. Make a team and select a Vivisaurus to move into the space at the top of the screen. You absolutely have to have a Vivisaur in the red leftmost area. Okay. No, that was a bit long-winded, if you ask me. Alright. Let us head back to the trial dig site. Because I believe we have to go back there. Hang on, I really should have used that VMM to uh, put Shan Shan back on my team. Oh well, I think there's a VMM at the trial dig site. Someone else stalking around. But first, let us use this VMM. We want at least another Vivisaur on our team. We don't want Sp Spinax to fight all his battles alone. So we'll put Shan Shan with him. Oops, didn't want that. There we have. We have two Vivisaurs on our team. Now let's talk to this Joker. Oh, hi there. You must be new. I'm Holt. Good to meet ya. By the way, you've probably only fought one-on-one -on -one battles so far. Let me show you the deal with two-on-two -two battles. Alright. Let me start by explaining the red, blue, and green zones that the Vivisaur stand on. The red one is the attack zone. Vivisaurs in the attack zones can attack Vivisaurs in the opponent's attack or support zones. Blue zones are support zones. Vivisaurs in a support zone can only attack Vivisaurs in the opponent's attack zone. Support zone Vivisaurs deal less damage than they would from the attack zone. On the other hand, your Vivisaurs will take less damage when they're in the support zones. The green zone is the escape zone. Vivisaurs move there, can't use skills, but they also don't take any damage. You see what the Vivisaurs in the SZ did just now? They use support effects. Support effects are extra effects that support zone Vivisaurs perform automatically. Notice the arrow icons. An arrow pointing up means increased power, and an arrow pointing down means decreased power. <laughs> This is the swap command icon, which is used to move Vivisaurus between the zones. It moves the attack zone Vivisaur to the escape zone, and it moves the support zone Vivisaur to the attack zone. So let's swap. Each Vivisaur can attack only once per turn. Depending on how much FP you have left, you may be able to attack with a different Vivisaur. Whenever you lose a Vivisaur in battle, you get a big chunk of FP to help you fight back. Okay. There will be a few icons and arrows and such that you don't know. We'll cover those later. Time to test out our skills. 
All right. Another fossil battle. <laughs> oh, formation screen time. This is basically just setting up your team. Top of your opponent's team. Those are your vivisaurs. Red area is your attack zone. Blue area is your support zone. Green area is for your reserves. They won't appear in battle. However, they still get points from winning battles. Alright. This guy's got an Igua, which is Iguanodon. Igua is a dependable all-around class Vivisaur with a confused skill to throw enemy strategies off balance. And then there's V-Raptor, which is Velociraptor, obviously. While it relies mostly on poison skills, V-Raptor will eventually learn in flame, making it far more versatile in battle. Okay, we're good. Spinax will be our main attacker because he has more attack power and more health. Alright, we have to deal with Velocic Claw, which is a simple claw attack. We'll smack Igua first. Spinax Fang. Okay, we don't have enough FP for another attack. Fist jab is exactly what it sounds like. A jab with the fists. And looks like he's switching out to V-Raptor so Igwa doesn't get hurt. Let's hit V-Raptor with Shan Fang. Which is a couple of bites. Nothing too special. Then Spinax Fang. There goes V-Raptor. There's no escape now, Igwa. Oh. Critical hit. There goes Shan Shan. Well, one more Spinax Fang will do it. Yep, down goes Igwa. And we got one point. Volantes is the winner. <laughs> and we get a rank up for Spinax. We're now rank two, our LP increased by one, attack increased by five, and defense increased by three. And Shan Shan gets a rank up, too. LP went up by 1, attack went up by 4, defense by 2, and evasion by 1. Battle points, yeah. The reserves get battle points, too. That's what I was trying to explain. If you have Vivisaurs that you want to develop before they start fighting, stick them in your reserve. See ya, Holt. Hi there, Volantes. We run into you again. I think you've learned everything you can at the Trial Dig Site. I'm giving you permission to travel to an honest-to-goodness dig site. Greenhorn Plains. Sounds more like a cattle ranch than anything, but I'll take it. Talk to the harbor receptionist to arrange visits to dig sites. Okay. If my memory serves me correctly, we can find four vivisaurs at Greenhorn Plains. I believe you can find Spinax fossils, Shan Shan fossils, V Raptor fossils, and I think. Goyle fossils, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Other three, though, I am. I'm definitely going to be getting a V-Raptor. All right, let's go to Greenhorn Plains. On the top screen, it says, right in the center of Vivisaur Island, this expansive plain is a good spot for rookies to get started digging.
all aboard the Pteranodon boat. <laughs>